Hi everyone, my name is Kendrick and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a video settings menu that will allow the player to edit the quality of the graphics inside of the game itself. Now before we dive in, I just want to show you really quick what we're going to create. So if I click play up here, you can see that we're transported into our game and we can see our video settings menu. Now first thing I'll do is set all of these up to the highest level. Now if I drag down the graphical quality, which is essentially the resolution, you can definitely see the effect there. And if I drag down the post processing, you can see how that affects the quality of the graphics. Now um, the anti-aliasing, before we can really see the effect there, let's actually drag down the resolution. Now if I decrease the anti-aliasing, you can definitely see how it becomes much more pixelated. And if I increase it, the pixels become much smoother. Now the shadow quality, you can definitely see the effect there. And the frame rate, if I drag that down to 15 hertz and play the game, you can see how that's uh, pretty choppy. The frame rate is really awful. And if I set that to 30 hertz, uh, it definitely gets smoother. And finally, 60 hertz, uh, you can see that's definitely um, pretty smooth there. Now, actually, the highest uh, frame rate that we have available is the 144 hertz, but uh, my monitor doesn't support that, so it doesn't make a bit of difference. And even if it did, you wouldn't be able to see it on YouTube anyway. So there we go. Uh, works pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, now I've just created a new project using the third person template, and I've also imported the open world collection demo asset that's available for free in the asset store. So I'll leave a link uh, to that in the description in case you want to use it. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of here is create a new widget blueprint. So I'll right click, scroll down here to the bottom, user interface, widget blueprint, and I'll call this video settings. Open that up. And the first thing we'll create inside of here is a horizontal box. We'll size that to the full width and height of the, of the uh, canvas panel here. And inside of the horizontal box, we'll have a vertical box. And we'll wrap that with a size box. Select the size box, set the uh, sizing property to fill, horizontally and vertically line center, check the width and height override, set the width to 1000, the height to 500. And inside of uh, that vertical box, we're going to create another horizontal box and we'll uh, rename that to setting. Inside of the setting object, we'll have a piece of text and we'll also have yet another horizontal box. We'll select the piece of text and set the sizing property to fill and the horizontal box will also be fill, except um, we don't want this text object to hog up uh, half of the width here. We actually want it to be more like 0.6. There we go. Now inside of the horizontal box, we're going to create two buttons. And in between those two buttons, we'll create a piece of text. And we'll also slap a piece of text on top of each of those buttons as well. Now select the piece of text that's in between those buttons, set that to fill. And let's set these, uh, let's, instead of having text to block, let's set these two arrows. So that'll be a left arrow. This will be a right arrow. So basically what we're creating here is uh, like a selector so we can select back and forth between or toggle between a low medium high and ultra settings now select this text uh, item here and we'll set this to center and we'll set it to vertically aligned center as well now select these buttons here or actually select the text uh, that's on top of the buttons and let's set that padding to 15 do it for this one as well now select this piece of text here, set that to vertically aligned center, and set the uh, font size to 30. Now we can um, let's minimize that, select the setting object, copy it, select the vertical box above it, and actually uh, before we copy it, let's put some padding here, give it padding of 15. Then let's copy it, and let's paste four more of these so that we have five total. Now um, inside of here, let's um, name each of these settings. So this first setting will be graphical quality the second will be post processing the third one will be anti-aliasing hope I spelled that right and the fourth will be shadow quality and the final here will be uh, the frame rate so that's the frames per second at which our game runs. Now compile and save that and go into the uh, graph here. 
And actually the first thing we're going to do is create a set of variables here. The first will be main settings. It will be of type text and it will be an array. We'll duplicate that and we'll call this FPS settings. FPS here is standing for frames per second. We'll create another variable. We'll call this graphical commands. This one will be um, post processing. Actually, let's just abbreviate it. PP commands. This will be AA commands for anti aliasing. Then we'll have shadow commands and finally FPS commands. And then after that we'll have graphical index and this will not be an array it's, and it's going to be of type uh, integer. Duplicate that. This will be post processing index or double P for short. Then below that we'll have anti aliasing index and shadow index. And finally, this will be FPS index. Compile and save that. Now we're going to set the values for each of these uh, variables. So this main settings array, we're going to create four objects. These are going to be the actual strings that the user sees when they're toggling through the settings. So the first will be low, the second will be medium, the third will be high, and the final will be ultra. This is the highest setting. Now FPS settings, we're also going to have four items, except this time it's going to be 15 hertz, that's the lowest setting. 30 hertz is the medium setting. Uh, 60 hertz is the high setting. And the highest setting is 144, oh, see, 144 hertz. There we go. Now the graphical commands. These are going to be actually the console commands that we'll execute, and they correspond with the uh, main settings and FPS settings here. So the syntax we use here to change the like screen quality or resolution is r dot screen percentage, and the lowest uh, the value for the lowest quality will be set to 25. Now copy that, and the second setting will be 50 percent. The highest setting will be 75, and the highest setting will be 100 percent. Now for the post processing commands. Here we use sg dot post process quality and the lowest setting is zero. Copy that. Down here we'll set it to one, two, and the final will be three. Now anti-aliasing commands. This will be post process AA quality. Zero. Let's set these others down here. Now the shadow commands, sg dot shadow quality, zero. Now finally the FPS commands, we'll have four items here as well. And the syntax we'll use here is t dot max FPS. And the lowest setting as we said was 15 and the medium setting was 30. Then we have 60 and finally 144. Now we're just going to set the default values for each of these indexes. Now for um, here I'm just going to set the value for all of these to be high. You can set them to whatever you want but the index for high is 2. So I'm just going to set the default for each of these as 2. Now compile and save that. Let's go back inside of the designer, select the um, button here, and we're gonna add the functionality. So as soon as it is clicked, we're going to uh, subtract from the graphical index here. So let's set that value, and the value we'll set it to is the current graphical index minus one. We'll put a clamp on that so that it doesn't exceed the minimum or maximum uh, length of the array here, the main settings array. So let's get that value and let's get the length of it and then subtract one from that length. The reason we have to subtract one is that arrays start at index zero. So if we just uh, put in the length here, we'd be able to go one over the maximum. So let's just line that up, set that up. There we go, hook that up and connect that to the on-click event. 
Now back inside of the designer, we'll set the unclicked event for the incrementing button. So it'll, it'll be the exact same thing as this right here, except instead of subtracting one, we'll be adding one. So delete that node and do a plus here. And we're done there. Go back to the designer and we'll do the same thing for each of these buttons. Now for the uh, frame rates here, it's going to be slightly different. So it'll, we'll get the unclicked event. And just like before, we'll be setting the frames per second index. We'll get the current index. We'll subtract one. We'll put a clamp on it. But here's where it's slightly different. So we'll just copy this here, paste it down here. And instead of getting the length of the main settings array, we're gonna get the length of the frames per second array. So there we go, that's really the only difference. So move that forward, connect that here, connect the return value, set that up. And for the last button here, we'll just copy this bit, paste it here. And instead of subtracting one, we'll add one. And there we go. Now one of the, uh, the final thing we need to do inside of here is we have it to where it'll uh, change the graphical index but as soon as we adjust uh, one of the uh, values we want it to update inside of the game so how we do that is we drag off of here and type execute console command and the command we want to execute in this case is the graphical command since uh, this is the like resolution setting so drag off of here get and the index we will get is the current graphical index so just connect that here, move all of this forward. Now select this uh, or connect this here as well so that whether we um, you increment the value or decrement the value, it will automatically update inside of the game. So let's do the same thing for each of these down here. And finally, we'll set this up for the frames per second setting. Compile and save. Now X out of here and up here at the top where it says blueprints. Let's open the level blueprint. Now inside of here, as soon as the level is loaded, we're going to create a widget. Owning player will be get player controller. And we'll uh, add that to the viewport. The one we're going to create is the video settings widget. So there we go, compile and control S to save. Now actually I forgot, we need to also set input mode UI only. The widget we're going to focus on is the return value of the widget we just created. And finally, uh, set show mouse cursor. We're going to set that to true. Compile and control S to save. X out of there. Now uh, into the third person BP folder, blueprints. I'm opening up the uh, player here. And down here at the bottom, inside of the event graph, let's get the um, F key. As soon as the F key is pressed, we're going to create a widget. And we're basically doing the exact same thing we just did here. In fact, we could probably just copy that code to make things quicker. Let's just copy this here. And there we go. Now this, this will allow us to go back and forth or transition back and forth between our game and our menu. Now the final thing we need to do, I'll see, oops, video settings, compile and save. Now into the video settings widget and we'll just create a horizontal box really quick. Drag that under the canvas panel. 
I'll drag that down here and we'll create a button inside of there with some text on top of it and the text will say close or it'll say exit menu and we'll set this to fill we'll make the text a little larger 40 and there we go that's good enough for that now let's set the on clicked event for this button as soon as it is clicked we're going to remove all the widgets get player controller set input mode game only Set show mouse cursor. We'll leave that to false. Hook that up here. Connect that to the remove all widgets node. And there we go. Compile and save. Now the final thing we'll need to do is uh, bind the values here. So let's create a binding. And the value that we'll bind that to will be the main settings array. And we'll get whatever the graphical index currently is. There we go and save that now the next one create a binding get the main settings array get get the post processing index and we'll do the same for each of these And finally, we have the frame rate setting. Now this will be slightly different. Instead of getting the main settings array, we'll get the frames per second array. Get, and the index we'll get is the current FPS index. Set that up, compile and save. All right, now if we preview our game here, you can see we have our video settings menu and we can adjust these uh, properties just like we demonstrated at the uh, beginning of the video. So there we go, uh, works like a charm. Uh, what you can do now is expand this to add some save game functionality so that the user can actually save these settings. And you can al also, you can, you're, not, you're not just limited to these five settings here. You can also add all sorts of other stuff like texture quality, um, detail inside of uh, um, particle effects, uh, all sorts of stuff. So what I'll do now is I'll actually show you inside of the Unreal documentation where you can find that at. So yeah, here we go. We're inside of the Unreal Engine documentation, and you can see here they have all sorts of stuff. The, you can set the resolution, uh, the view distance, anti-aliasing, post-processing, shadows, textures, effects. They provide um, the commands that you can use. See here we have r.screenpercentage. This is just what we used earlier. And they have um, everything you need to know here about adjusting the video uh, quality settings or the graphic settings. So I'll definitely include a link to that in the description so you can check it out. Alright, well that concludes this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, then you can definitely help me out by giving it a thumbs up. And I've got lots of new videos just like this coming out every single week, so if you want to stay updated, then definitely hit that subscribe button. This is Code Viper, and until next time.